Fez is an indie game. No, 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 stop. We're not done. I'm sorry. Okay, no, let, let's actually talk about the video game. Huh? Does that sound good with you guys? Okay. Fez is a retro-styled indie platforming game. It's been in development for over five years. The main gimmick to this game is that you're able to change the perspective at 90 degree angles. If you're jumping around and you can't find the next thing to jump on, you press the button and then it turns around and then there's another thing you can jump on. That's the premise behind Fez. The idea of altering perspective to adjust gameplay is something that's been around for a while. Sega's Crush did it, and apparently Gabe Newell was going to do it with Portal 2, before he realized that no one would play a Portal game that didn't have any portals or funny jokes about cake. Naturally, since Fez has had five whole years to be developed, and a small handful of other perspective-altering games to look to, for example, its puzzles based around its one gimmick should be pretty good. Theoretically. Before we cover Fez's gameplay, let's start by covering the graphics. As per usual for an indie game, it follows a retro-styled pixel art approach. There's nothing blatantly offensive about the graphics, but I can't help but think I've seen this style somewhere before. Fez's gameplay consists of typical retro platforming moving left and right and jumping up and down. On top of that, you have the perspective-altering gimmick of rotating the world at a 90-degree angle. Unfortunately, this gimmick isn't used to its full advantage, and all the puzzles are extremely simple. You're mostly gonna be just rotating the world when you run out of things to jump on, or when you need to find a block. There's some kind of dumb puzzles later on, I think one of them you need like a QR code read on your phone, which is really stupid, I hate those fucking things. Now some of you might be saying, Rockcock64! Why don't you like Minecraft? Why you want it to look like Call of Duty? Now some of you might be saying, But Rockcock64, you forgot to finish talking about the gameplay. What about all the other aspects to it? Well, I got news for you, buddy. I did finish talking about the gameplay. That's all there is to Fez. There's no enemies or obstacles. There's no way to die other than taking fall damage. Now you might be thinking, oh, fall damage in a platforming game? That makes sense. It would make sense to be penalized for missing your jumps. Well, it doesn't quite work that way, because when you die, you just respawn from the last platform you jumped off of. In the end, there's no penalty for doing bad, and there's no difficulty to the game. The old games that these retro-style indie platformers are trying to replicate had these things. They had difficulty, they had challenge, and they had a reason to keep playing. But these games that are supposed to be mimicking and tributing these games don't have any of that. Instead, they're focused on being art. On the subject of music, critics were praising Fez for its supposed deep, beautiful soundtrack. The reality, though, is that the game has next to no music, period. Just ambience created through chiptune samples. There are maybe two or three actual songs in the game, and they're as boring as the ambience. It sets the mood as being boring, empty, and full of itself very well, at least. It clearly thinks it's art. If you came to play a game, though, prepare to be twice as bored from the shitty, dull audio accompanying the bland, empty experience Fez has in store for you. The sound effects were clearly done in AS3 SFX, which is a sound generator most indie developers use when they're lazy and want a game to sound retro. So on top of the uninteresting ambience for background music, you have shitty generated sound effects in-game that aren't interesting. And of course, no work of art is complete without funny internet jokes! Look at that! It's just like that one picture I saw on the internet of the glasses going on the thing. It's pretty funny. I'm glad you have jokes that I know I'm supposed to laugh at already instead of new ones. Thank you. Now look, the way you know this game is art is because whenever you enter any area, you get to stare at it for 10 seconds while the camera pans around and lets you absorb all the art radiating off of all the pixels. That's how art works, I think. It radiates off of video games. Pretty sure. If that's not enough art for you, how about that cover? That's drawn by the Scott Pilgrim guy. So you know it's super indie. Why is the thumb on the wrong side of the hand? Did... Did no one think to fix that before they... released this? The game's creator, Phil Fish, sure is an important guy. He also wants to make sure you know about his opinions. 
Did you know that modern Japanese games are bad? That's what he said. Now granted, there are quite a few modern Japanese games that are pretty bad. Quite a few. But I feel like he's almost forgetting one. One that had some kind of influence over the game he spent five years making. Hmm. I don't know, I, I could just be forgetting things. Not Japan just must blow dick. On top of his comments about modern Japanese games, Fish also told people to suck his dick and choke on it since he won two indie game awards that his single game shouldn't have even been eligible for. He called gamers the worst people since they frowned on him acting like a brat. People say that you shouldn't judge the game based on the creator, but I think Fish was aware of how unimpressive Fez ended up being and figured if he at least acted full of himself, people would think the game was more than it really was. And he probably got some people downloading it and trying it who wouldn't have tried it before. As stupid as he acted, it was at least more entertaining than Fez ended up being. And it's probably all anyone will remember the game for. I don't really understand why this game took five years to develop. I mean, the graphics are all tiny pixel art, so that wouldn't have taken much time. And once the main gimmick is done being programmed, it seems like the only thing left to do is really create stages, and for something this simple, I don't think that would have taken that long. Or if they took this long, the stages should have at least been really good. Instead you have this. And I don't understand why it took so long. I mean, some guy even did the same game in Flash, like, a while ago, in a lot less time. And his game actually had enemies, and difficulty, and proper gameplay mechanics to actually make it a proper game. So I can't figure out what this guy was doing for five years. What were you doing? For five years! Various big-name game review sites such as IGN gave Fez high reviews. IGN gave it a 9.5, claiming that Fez is a shout-out to old gaming, and that it reminds players why they fell in love with games in the first place. Fez and most indie platformer games trying to be old school don't quite hit the mark. Old school games were always about challenge, presenting gamers with new obstacles, new ideas, and pushing the hardware as hard as it possibly could. Fez and all these other cookie cutter indie platforming games don't do any of this. They just try to put on a pretty face with bright, blocky graphics to make you think it's just like the games you played when you were a kid then the actual gameplay is nothing. I guess the big review sites like IGN felt they had to give Fez high scores because it was such a long developed and super hyped game amongst indie gamers. They're probably looking to the internet and seeing all these people hyped on indie games and Minecraft feeling like these are the games they have to play because they don't like Call of Duty. You don't have to go to the opposite side of the spectrum just because you don't like the mainstream big hit games. It's okay if you don't like Call of Duty. That doesn't mean you have to run all the way to the other side of the street and play with indie games in the dirt. You can appreciate big name games and smaller games as well. But there's plenty, plenty of games you're missing out on if you just go to one side or the other. Most games on the extreme sides of the indie to big budget spectrum are going to have huge problems. But that's something that just comes with extremism in general. Naturally, if you try to make the most hardcore or the most indie game in the world, it's going to turn into a stereotype of itself. That's why you have all these indie games that all look the same with retro style big pixel graphics, which end up just being jokes that are made to look like these old games. And it's also why you have this endless supply of brown, desert, modern military shooters, which are also completely undistinguishable from each other. It's because you're trying so hard to appeal to this one side of gaming that you're leaving the other side behind. I'm not saying that a game should try to appeal to everyone in gaming. No, that's terrible. But understand when you're going too far. Five years ago, maybe this game would have mattered. But nowadays, there's an endless ocean of indie platformers trying to look retro to pick from. And Fez offers the least of an experience out of any of them. It's hard to honestly go into depth with Fez because it's literally the most two-dimensional game around. 
which is ironic considering what its entire gimmick and theme is. It's the most basic platformer with an empty, soulless world that isn't interesting or engaging, and without an objective but collecting the stupid blocks and having no consequences for actions or some sort of challenge. It's just a hollow experience where you are realistically only going to push yourself through it if you are following the hype. Even if you love generic retro-style platformers, Fez won't interest you. Overall, Fez is a piece of crap.